Seth Greenberg with us. So 11 seeds, Wichita State, Gonzaga advanced. The Shockers now get the three seed in Miami. Gonzaga gets the three seed in Utah. Which one has the best chance to get to the Sweet 16 now? I think it's Wichita State. Wichita State, is that is a good formula for the NCAA tournament. Would you say they're about 40 years old? Yeah, about 40 years old, a couple years younger than me. We'll have uh, research check that, Seth. Thanks. Uh, he's going to be back in just a second. ESPN's BPI currently gives the Shockers a 4Q's head coach, Jim Beheim. He has won a national championship. He's been to four Final Fours. He has been a one seed three different times, and he's never been lower than an eight seed before this year. And when the Orange were seeded 10th for this year's tournament, Bayheim said that he had never been happier on a selection Sunday. That's because a year ago, Syracuse banned themselves from postseason play for academic misconduct. It was the first time the Orange had missed the postseason since 1993. Bayheim himself would be benched nine games this season as part of the NCAA's punishment. The team would go four and five during that space. A couple days off, he's plugged them back in. New season, let's go. Utah, Jock, Gazelle are good enough to advance in this tournament. They've got to get back to guarding. But they're a dangerous team because they play fast and they play freed up. Given sort of that method of unplugging, though, how much concern do you have on this Iowa team? It's really been on a slide late in the year, lost five of their last six, and you hear that, and it doesn't sound so great. It doesn't sound so great, but you think about the competition they're playing number one, number that's all. They've got to play two games. So what they got to do worry about is remember who we were when. So if I'm Fran McCaffrey, I'm editing out highlights from the Michigan State wins and all the big wins they had early in the season. This is how good you guys can be. This is who you really are. Let's go back to being that team. And I'm sure that's what he did this week. Uh, that 10 versus 7 matchup, that's tipping off around 310 Eastern. Seth Greenberg with us this morning here on, it, to help them get into this NCAA tournament. On the women's side, they've had it much, much easier. They won 63 straight conference games by double digits. And you come great. Uh, Rebecca Lobo with us this morning. So you look at what they've done, this run, the manner in which they beat teams, Rebecca. How can anyone pull off an upset and take down UConn? Well, I think the most important ingredient a team has to have in order to come by 10. <laughs> but without one of their best players able to play. Okay, so then you would think that that would even it up a, a little bit. Notre Dame, of course, the number one seed in that Lexington region. So those two teams wouldn't meet until the championship game. Uh, another team that people are keeping an eye on, South Carolina, uh, the number two overall seed, potentially two games in Columbia. But then the Lady Gamecocks have to go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the Sweet 16. What do you think of that? Well, the South Carolina fans aren't happy about that. And the championship runs. It is often the intangibles that get you where you've always dreamed of going passion determination those are things that can't be measured and neither can heart especially when it's broken as documented in the espn films 30 for 30 the guru of go we look back at the incredible 1990 tournament run of loyola marymount days before the ncaa's tipped off as they watched in horror as their teammate and friend hank gathers collapsed on the court and died they honored him with how they played, including a unique personal tribute from his closest friend.